Hello world, welcome to take 862 of me trying to explain CSS squared where I will be going over a fun example of building these uh, nice looking dice using it. This video is going to be a little rough so please forgive me of the errors and the pauses and we are ready to get right into the content. So we have an empty container here. Uh, with CSS squared we can define tracks that is, we can say that it's going to have a certain number of columns and rows. We can place items into these cells. The grid system numbers these uh, column lines from left to right and the row lines from top to bottom. Using which, we can say that a particular item is going to start at line 2 and end at line 4, uh, start at row line 2 and end at row line 4, we can also say that it ends at row line 4 but spans 3 rows. So uh, every grid line can also be accessed with a negative number. It's useful when you are not sure how many column lines there are but always want to access the rightmost or the bottommost line. So in this case I can say that I want this uh, item to touch the rightmost uh, end of the parent. So I can say uh, I can say that it has to end at column line minus one. A bonus thing here uh, is that you can you get the most hassle-free way of overlapping elements with CSS squared. Coming back to our problem of creating the faces of a die or dies. Uh, we uh, we have one container uh, which I will call the face and we can have multiple children which I'll call dots so uh, I want this container to have this 3x3 three three grid and we'll be finding a way to place these items into these specific spots so Let's go to this playground and start writing our markup and then style it. So for now, I want a, a face div inside which I only want a single dot for now. Uh, I'll go to CSS and start styling. So I'll select the face class and give it a width of 256 pixels, a height of 256 pixels, and then a background of secondary BG, which uh, is going to give me this nice square. Now, to say that it is going to be a grid layout, I should give it the display property of grid. And to define the number of columns, I should define the grid template columns. And then I'll be giving it 1FR, 1FR, and 1FR. So this is going to give us three columns. FR is short for fraction. So the available space is going to be split into three fractions. And each of the columns is going to get one fraction. That is, all the columns are going to be of equal width, uh, distributed across the whole 256 pixels of the width of the container. So I can do the same with grid template rows. Uh, now, instead of me uh, typing 1fr thrice, I can use the repeat function and say repeat of 3, 1fr. Uh, which is going to achieve the same. Uh, so we have defined the tracks now. Let's go ahead and define uh, and style the dot. So by default, all the grid items are going to be occupying one cell and all the space inside it. So if I just give the background, it should be enough to make it appear. So it's going to be accent. Uh, Accent, yep. So, yeah. Mm. There's that. I can uh, say grid column start of 2 to make it start from the second column line. And grid column end 
of minus 1 to make it touch the rightmost column line. Uh, there's a shorthand for this, which is a grid column. I can give, I should give the start first, which is 2, and then uh, forward slash minus 1. Okay, so I can also say that it's going to span two columns. So it's going to start from uh, column line 2 and then span two columns. Yeah, so I'm not going to be going over every uh, property in detail, uh, which I think is enough for this one. So let's jump into actually designing the face. So I want this to be a circle, so I'll give it a border radius of 50%. And I want it to be... Uh, okay, so that was... 50% and I want I, I want to define explicitly define the width and height to be 32 pixels so you can see that it's going to hit the left and the top of the cell I can say that justify self of center to bring it to the horizontal center of the cell and another property which is align self of center to bring it to the vertical center which is going to give me uh, this uh, which is going to give me this so there's a shorthand for this one too which is place self oops place self of center Cool. Uh, now let me go back here and add two more dots. And by default, it's going to lay them out uh, in uh, left to right and top to bottom fashion. Now I need a way to place these dots in the respective uh, cells. That is, I want them along the principal diagonal. So I can say here grid column start, but that's going to cause a problem because it's going to apply for every dot so I will define uh, top class which is just going to override uh, or just define grid column start uh, so sorry uh, the top class is going to be the first row the middle class is going to be the second row and bottom will be the third row so I can say grid row start of one and middle middle is going to have grid row start of 2 and dot bottom is going to be grid row end of minus 1. I could have also done it uh, by using grid row start of 3 but this is going to show you that even this can be done. So in a similar fashion, I've also defined the left, center, and the right, which is here. And now, using these, I can come here and uh, give it these classes. So this is going to be left and top. I know by default it's going to be there, but I want it to be explicit. So this is going to be um, center and middle middle and this is going to be uh, right bottom cool uh, oh I forgot to give the border radius which I'll do right here so I'll give it border radius of 12 pixels this is what we saw in the presentation earlier. So I think that's uh, gonna do it for this one. Um, I recommend that you try and design the other faces of the die and happy gridding. Thanks for watching.